In this video, I will be covering the following topics. How to min-max buffs, rotations, spot mechanics. We'll talk about drops and we'll manage our expectations. Now, before you go there and grind, I suggest you go there and get S knowledge and all of the monsters. This should be really easy as spots from Balenos to Medea have like increased chance to drop knowledge. Also, if you plan on grinding there for a prolonged amount of time, I suggest you level up the node. So if we go for Quint Hill, the Quint Hill node is the right one and you level up to 20, you get 10% extra item drop rate from it. Now, before we go on with the buffs, let me explain to you how the AP caps work. Now we're gonna go to Monster Zone Info, Quint Hill, and right here there's this button, view total stats, you press on it and then it shows 920 restricted. Now as you can see 920 means that uh, all AP past 920 is gonna be calculated as only 5%. So that means that if you have 100 AP past 920, so 1020, it will only be felt as like 925 so like pretty much nothing now ideally you would want your ap to be as close to this number as possible so as you can see right here for me it says 814 i'm not buffed so this is a very like the minimum ap that i have uh normally as you can see here on gar mode i have 930 um so basically past 920 ap doesn't really matter as much however species damage does matter and it helps uh species damage is at all times capped at 85 percent so that means out of 100 uh like species damage you get 85 of it so uh, by species damage, we're talking, of course, about uh, demi-human, for example, like on the harmony drug demi-human, we have ex extra 15 demi-human, which would mean something like uh, 13 points because it's capped at 85%. Um, it's also worth noting that when you look at Monster Zone Info, uh, this number here, 814, does not calculate the monster AP uh, from your add-ons and as you can see here on my add-ons I have 30 monsters so whenever I use furor I will get 30 monster for 12 seconds uh, basically this means I constantly have 30 monster AP extra because of the add-ons also guys guys I've injured myself trying to make this video, so it will really help pay my medical bills if you left a like and a subscribe on this video. Now let's talk about church buff and tent buff. Since now the church buff is available at the shop here in the tent, you no longer need to go to the church for it. However, in this case I'm 930 AP, so I don't really need the AP buffs from the church. So I will be only taking the DR buffs from the church. Also, you're gonna go to the Villa Scroll and get Body Enhancement as well. Now, if you don't have Secret Book of Old Moon, just like I don't have it right now, you can actually still get Body Enhancement from the tent uh, without having to go all the way to the Villa every single time by just purchasing a Villa Invitation. You can purchase the villa invitation from any NPC that is like linked to a villa. Now in my case, obviously the best in slot food for this case is exquisite cron meal. So we're gonna use that. The best elixir is uh, harmony draw the demi human for uh, trolls. And of course, for perfumes, we're gonna use elixir of the deep sea. Now, if you're not reaching the cap, you can also use something like the Kutum Lamp, which gives 15 AP, or any sort of furniture that gives you AP. If you have the Crocdalo Horse Set, which uh, gives you a 5 AP buff, you can use that as well. Again, this is only if you're not reaching the cap and you need some extra AP in order to do that. 
if you're in a guild you can also request item drop rate buff and the uh, combat exp buff also when you're going for the extra knowledge uh, on the trolls before grinding there you can also request uh, knowledge gain chance and uh, higher grade knowledge chance if your guild has those skills obviously you want to remember to start up your alchemy stone here we'll be using the back attack crystal set as you can see here on this set we have the following rebellious spirit crystals two of them two crystal of mysterious darkness uh, two glorious crystals of gallantry akrad one dark red fan crystal valor four ultimate combined magic crystal makalod two crystal of brutal decimation and uh, two ancient uh, magic crystal of crimson flame power you also use gear and steer of course and if you have it only use the ancient spirits crystal of swiftness obviously we're using back attack crystals because the mobs are very big and uh, there's just a few of them and they're very slow which allows you to go behind them and hit them in the back a lot since i'm wrenching the cap uh, we will be using uh, the set the wild demi humans as you can see right here the set gives us extra demi human plus 15 so we have a 30 uh, demi human bonus wearing this set obviously if you could just uh use this with combined with kabuas uh, in my case i don't have kabuas for this set yet and uh, i'm not really dying there so if you feel like they hit too hard you might want to have two kabuas ready before you go there also if you want to try hard as much as possible you can also come to carolyn here in heidel and if you talk to her in exchange for 25 energy she'll give you a small buff which gives you critical hit damage 10 percent but it's only for 30 minutes so if you want to make use of this as much as possible as soon as you get the buff you just buff up completely and you just switch to a tagged character walk with the tagged character all the way to trolls and once you get there you just switch back to your character and you start killing like that you don't waste any of your buffs at trolls i also don't recommend you use any sort of uh, exp scrolls because the exp ain't that great so uh do it only if you really want to so right now if i'm gonna hit this mob over here with uh, furor you can see i got the buff monster ap and if we go to monster zone info a quint hill and you'll see it's 927 now this is without the ap church buff and uh it shows that i'm past the cap so as long as i'm hitting something with uh basically this i will have consistently 927 so i'm past the cap also if you plan on doing any of the reoccurring quests here uh they pretty much give you nothing uh what you get from those quests is basically either more scorching sun shards or more corrupted breath but neither of them sell so basically it, it's probably a waste of time now in order to find the spot you need to be looking somewhere uh northwest of calfion right here and it's quint hill now if you right click on quint hill it will just get you to the npc for uh, node manager and uh that is where we need to be at okay so now that we have arrived this is where you want to leave your horse okay so now that we're here uh i first want to mention that if you can see back there we have a rift now this works very similar to every other uh, Calfion Elvia spot. From that rift, at some point while you're grinding, based on your drop rate, you will get um, a boss to spawn from that rift. Uh, it's gonna be the base three uh, bosses that spawn from the rift, which we got like Ogre, Gigagord, and uh, Cyclops. And basically they work exactly the same as they do at Giants okay so let's talk about uh rotations first of all this is your first part of the rotation this is their basically everything you see here is actually just one group of monsters that you need to deal with i will explain later but this is where you start and then to the right right here you have the second part of your rotation 
Now, if you have like very low gear, uh, which I suggest you don't come here if your gear is pretty bad. But uh, if you have pretty low gear, you might only need those two uh, over here. However, uh, when if you are gonna grind, whenever you get the Rift boss, you will get a buff which increases your uh, AP by a lot. So you might need a third. And here is your third. Basically, you come from there, you land here, and you kill those guys over here as well. Uh, now, there's two ways in which you can kill here, and uh, I think both ways can work out. I've seen people pull great numbers on both. I do think the second method is better than uh, the other, but uh, I'll leave that up to you. But on the second method... After you kill this part here, you will also need to kill this part over here. Like right, like you came from there, you go to the left and here is the last boss. And then like, sorry, the last elite. And then you have to fly back through here. I mean, if you're not a land, this is gonna be hard, but uh, I'm sure you can manage. And uh, you'll be back at the horse and where the NPC was. Uh, obviously here you can leave your tent, you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, basically, the rotation is pretty easy here. Okay, now let's talk about the spot mechanics. Now, the spot mechanics obviously are gonna be a little bit weird because like uh, this spot is pretty unique in this regard. But uh, first thing you want to do is you'll notice this big monster in the middle here has three monsters that seem to be uh, moving. Now, as you can see, this one looks like a statue here on the left while those seem to be like animated that's what i'm talking about now what you want to do is you want to just jump in and kill all of those three mobs around the big guy now you'll notice there's another big guy in the background there as well we'll talk about him in a moment uh but basically you need to start with the big uh, elite monster that has three monsters around them you just kill the uh, little three monsters and then uh the big guy will start moving now, as the big guy starts moving, he has a lot of DP. And this is gonna be for a few seconds before he's like animated. Now the DP buff, uh, like his DP buff went away. And you can see my damage got like uh, so much higher right now on him. When you get him past 50% HP, he's gonna die. And all other monsters will start like running towards you. Now you want to pull all other monsters right here where this other uh, elite guy is. You can see he's bigger than the other guys. And you just want to kill him super duper fast. And uh, once, once the second elite big guy dies, all monsters will be held in one place. And their DP buff is taken away for a few seconds. And as you can see, the mobs die a lot faster. Now if you don't... Kill the big shaman elite and debuff the mobs and get them stuck in one place. Basically, it's a lot harder to kill the mobs. Like, it takes so much more time. So, like, if I would have stayed here and I would have waited for the mobs, then it would have taken me, like, two or three times longer than what it did uh, up there. Uh, also, the big guy that we got past half HP, he's gonna get up. And he's gonna run towards you and this time you can finally kill him as you can see he's dead right there now basically this is how the, the mechanic works kind of and like what you want to do now you're gonna go to the next spot you're gonna kill the three guys uh the big guy is gonna be uh, animated you can start fighting him uh you can either attack him right away or you can wait a little bit for his defense debuff to, like sorry defense buff to go away and then um basically after he's down 50 percent hp like 51 percent hp he falls on the ground and those guys which are stuck here as like uh, statues are gonna start attacking you you go up to the shaman you wait for them to gather up a bit and then you kill the shaman they all get stuck in one place and you can kill them easily they won't attack you you deal more damage to them if they're stuck and then you kill the big guy and you go next 
uh, now this is the basis of how to do this and when you have uh, the monster buff like the dark rift uh, boss buff uh, you will um, need three zones like this is the first zone that is the second one and uh, you will need the third one which I said is like uh, right up ahead uh, this path now this is the first method and I've seen people like do well um, killing uh, monsters like this uh, people that pull like uh, anywhere close with just level 2 um, uh, item drop scroll they can get upwards to like 12,000 however there's uh, also a second method which a lot of people use and I've seen people pull crazy numbers with it as well which works a little bit different now how does this second uh, version of the grind work so first you do the same stuff like you go and kill the three guys over here right and you wait for that you, you can wait for them to gather you can attack them right away uh if you have your combo ready and everything it doesn't really matter i feel like it's uh, even better if you have like a good aoe to just like kill them as fast as possible but now that they are dead instead of killing the big guy we're gonna go straight to the second zone here and we're gonna kill the little guys here instead now what this does is basically as i'm fighting the guys here uh the big monster from the first uh, rotation part is gonna have his dp uh buff gone so now you can see up there the beneath his bar he doesn't have the dp buff and now i can just slam him and he's dead he didn't even get to attack and by the way that's a good indicator on uh like how good you're you're doing if he doesn't manage to attack you there then you're doing uh fine uh here as well we just keep doing the same stuff see they all gathered in the same spot we're waiting for them to get uh debuffed and then we can just attack them and kill them real fast now big guys here we can just start focusing on him uh the other guys will die on the in the process so we don't have to worry too much this is one attack you just want to make sure you kind of dodge but you, you don't want to get hit like three times by, by that attack and uh there we go we killed this part but like now when we go back here the little guys didn't respawn so this guy over here is now animated and without the dp buff so we kill him real fast and then we can just gather the mobs and uh keep going but now there's uh there's kind of a problem because now after i'm gonna kill all of the mobs here uh in the first spot where we've been earlier the mobs didn't respawn yet so we're gonna need an extra um group of mobs to kill so that's why i said that uh on the second method you need like an extended rotation uh and uh i think this one is slightly better than the first one uh you can get like a few hundred uh trash wood more if not maybe even uh, like a thousand two more it really depends i have it's really hard to find people like actually grinding here to see like how crazy they go with the trash loot personally i've never gotten like 13,000. Uh, I feel like that's kind of crazy. I mean, I'm also kind of nerfed before because of the class. And like you see, we killed the guys over here, and now we just move on to the next one. And the guy's uh DP buff is gonna go away while we're fighting those. Now, as you're done with the fourth guy, you'll just have to go past here and just all the way back to where we started. Now obviously some classes are gonna be slower because uh, not everybody can fly over uh, but uh, that's basically the best way to do it you jump over there and just come back to this uh, this group right here now what you'll see a lot of people do is just after killing the guy in the first half once he's on the floor they just go and directly kill this shaman here now this is really okay to do as long as your class has huge aoe because the monsters will be way too spread apart and as you can see my awakening lawn 
lacking the huge AoEs is kind of having like trouble uh, clearing up the monsters and you can see this one is like almost full HP I just had to kill him all the way through on his own and uh, the big guy is already here so I should be focusing on him now if your class has good AoE you can just kill the shaman guy before the mobs gather up because your AoE will just kill everything but if you have bad AoE it's better to just group them up now as you can see since my have bad AoE I'm just gonna sit behind and wait them a little bit and now that they are here like the first few got close now I can just start killing the shaman which is gonna debuff them and there you go, they all gather up in one spot, and now I can just nuke them. And uh, when the big guy got here, they're already like kind of pretty low. Uh, obviously, I didn't combo perfectly because I'm talking, but there you go. That's how you have it. It's a lot faster than the previous one, and uh, the big guy is also almost dead now. Let's go. Now, one thing I can give you is that there's always a gap here where there's no mobs that are going to come to you. So you can just sit on that gap over there like I did right now and when they gather up they're gonna all be uh, in one spot together all over the big shaman guy which uh, debuffs them. This is especially useful if your character doesn't have a great AoE like I said before. As you can see in this spot here as well there's a gap here where there's no monsters I'm just gonna sit on this side. And wait for them together and then i'm just gonna move around and start killing the shaman also as you can see here this is the gap this is literally where we where you need to wait a little bit and now that the four of them got together we're gonna kill them here as well and uh you'll see that they're mostly uh gather up together now the one on my right uh fucked up somehow uh, it was probably because i waited a little bit too long as well but it doesn't really matter if one guy is like uh bugged out or something you're just gonna go and fight him like this uh because the big boss will just follow anyway and you're gonna damage both of them it's just important that there's not more than one guy randomly stranded as you can see here as well they gather perfectly and now if i kill this guy it's gonna block all of them here as well and that's with all the four spots a little tip about the three little guys from the start of the rotation basically uh if you grind here for a while you'll notice that the, they spawn randomly like you can get for example like we have here two shamans on the right side and one uh, thrall on the left side now the shamans do have ranged attacks and so do the troll throwers uh so basically sometimes when you gotta go to one corner to drag them all in you will notice that one of them is not coming and he's just trying to do some ranged stupid attack on you now one thing i do in order to avoid that is first of all i go to the one that's uh behind the big troll whether he's to the right side or to the left side in this case our shaman is to the right side i just get close so they engage just like this and then i walk backwards so the guy behind there is out of range and now because he's out of range he needs to get closer and because he needs to get closer i can now hit all three of them at the same time now obviously i waited a little bit too long so it was a little bit worse than usual but uh basically it helps a lot with the ranged attack ones uh it's also uh it's gonna work pretty much the same if you have a troll thrower which is gonna also try to do range attack you just go behind him and you pull uh the one that's further ahead closer by just being out of range if you're in range he might do a, a ranged attack on you also you want to pick the corner uh which has the ranged attack uh, troll if there is only one of them obviously because the rest will just come towards you while the ranged one will again just attack you from a distance also it should be basic knowledge at this point but you want to make sure you hit them from the back as much as possible and uh i would suggest you also try to dodge their attacks as much as possible especially the big guys the small ones are kind of weak but the big guy 
can kill you in two hits if you're not paying attention, unless you're like some Zerker or a Shy. Another reason people kill uh, with the second method is because, as you can see here, there's another rift. So basically, uh, killing in both spots at the same time like this uh, is not only efficient, but it also gives you a higher chance of dropping a boss from the rift. So if you kill around as many of those as possible, it just makes your chances, like your odds better uh, to get a, a boss. And the boss also uh, has a chance to drop you a disto, so basically that's why people uh, prefer this method. While the trash difference might not be uh, too big, it does make a difference if you get more bosses because you can get a higher chance for a disto. Another thing that's important to note is that if you do get a boss from the rift, uh, when you go and activate the debuff from the shaman, the rift boss will also get stuck here and you get the chance to attack him while he's uh, suspended in animation. Also, one more thing about the boss, if he spawns, uh, when you kill the big elite troll like the one i'm having here he blows up and he deals damage to the rift boss so make sure you kill that one in uh, close proximity to the rift boss so you can get a little bit of damage off of it as far as i can tell he deals somewhere like 15 to 20 percent damage to the rift boss it's also good practice whenever you're trying to kill the little ones to sit in the direction in which you want to go next so it makes it a little bit faster. In this case I went to the right side behind the big boss because we're gonna go right the first thing after. It's not a big deal but it just cuts a little bit on the timer and uh, it adds up throughout the hour. Okay so I'll briefly mention a few drops. So what you're looking for in this spot is specifically the Forgotten Limbo Seal, which is gonna get you into the uh, Trail of Erethea, where you can get like a minimum of two Debreka rings. You can expect for this to drop like somewhere between uh, 9 to 15 hours. There's just a couple of things that affect your drop rate, which is uh, how fast you kill and what your drop rate percentage is at that moment. Blessed Soul Fragment is another decent drop, however it's getting harder and harder to sell it because the market is uh, oversaturated, however you can still sell it and uh, you can either drop it directly or you can just make it up with Crystallized Despair when you get enough of them. Same with Exalted Soul Fragment if you wish to get your money a little bit faster. Also, you can get a Black Distortion Earring from the Rift bosses if you are lucky. However, I would like to mention that uh, the drop rate for the Black Distortion Earring at Trolls is uh, pretty low for some reason. So you can expect to get one somewhere like once every 5-6 to six hours. Now here's an idea of what you should expect. I have 3 hours here, one is with uh, Agris coin and Agris turned on at the same time. One hour is just with the Agris coin and one hour is just with level 2 loot scroll. Now as you can see with the uh, Agris turned on it took me like 33k Agris uh, for one hour and uh, with the Agris coin on at the same time I got somewhere close to 16,000 trash loot. Uh, while with just the Agris coin I got somewhere uh, around like 13,000 uh, trash loot and without the coin just with level 2 we got like pretty close to 9,000 trash loot. Now those are pretty like average numbers, obviously I'm also uh, playing Awakening Lan, which is uh, uh, pretty uh, mediocre. Uh, if you have a better class you can just instantly pull more and uh, if you're really good with your class you can pull even better. So you can expect with a good class to go upwards to like uh, even like 12k, uh, even 13k if you're insane. Uh, without the Agris coin, with the Agris coin, you will go somewhere towards even like uh, 16k maybe. And uh, 
the insane guys could even get like 17 18k and with coin and agris some people pull over 20k like somewhere around 22k i think is the best i've seen uh obviously the other drops are like kind of random as you can see i got 475 uh black uh stones in the hour where i used agris while uh, i got less in the other hour where i didn't use agris while i got a little bit more when i didn't use either agris or coin uh obviously the drops here are not affected by agris in any way i'm just like pointing this out the drops are pretty random um however the, some one thing that is kind of like uh close is like the sun shards which obviously you can sell and obviously for three hours i didn't get any uh, disto i got like two bosses per hour at least and uh, right now I'm sitting at like somewhere around like 12 hours with no disto drop. So I, I actually got one limbo seal, but I didn't get a disto in 10 hours. So the drop rate for me was pretty bad. So in conclusion, if you have uh, an average class and you, you're at average skill, you should expect somewhere around those numbers. In any case, if you like the video, uh maybe you want to leave a like if you got any questions don't forget to leave them down below and uh if you want to catch me on the next video you might want to subscribe and i'll see you next bye bye